Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make farmland using faux fur instead of your normal materials often using like straw mats and things. I like using faux fur because you can kind of put your troops down in there. They're not like sitting on top of your fields if you're using a grass mat. So it kind of looks like they're actually like wading through a wheat field, which I think is a pretty cool effect. So I'm just going to walk through the process. It's pretty quick and easy. I'm going to make it a little bit more complex by adding some stone walls in there, a few bushes on the ends of it. But you can make a quick and simple version of this with just a piece of MDF base, some faux fur, and you're pretty much set to go. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm going ahead and I'm going to set up a foundation for my stone wall that I'm going to put on this piece of MDF, which will be the base for this field. So I just cut out a piece of foam board here and I kind of angled it at the sides with some scissors. If you've seen my tutorial on how to make a stone wall, this is going to be very similar to that. I'm basically going to just set this down and, and pile on rocks around it, making it kind of look like an old farmer's dry fit wall, one of those farmer's walls that doesn't use any mortar. And this is one of the easiest ways I think to make one of these walls. It doesn't require, you know, damming and molding or anything like that or carbon foam. So I just lay down some PVA and I just take some small pebbles and I try and work them together so that there's not much of a gap so you can't even see that poster board and it looks like uh, your typical small little stone farm wall. All right, so I'm just putting down PVA, trying to find little pebbles that fit and laying it across. It does take some time, but I always felt that making walls look good was always a real arduous process until I figured out, you know what, just use, use a piece of cardstock, use some foam board as a base, and then you can just kind of pile on rocks around it and you don't have to make a miniature version of a real life wall with little bits of stone and mortar. And then once my rocks are in place, I just spray it with a little bit of watered down PVA and I'm gonna drop sand all over the wall just to fit in those cracks in between the rocks, make sure the poster board doesn't show and just add a little bit of texture to the rocks. Now the next step is just to make the earth or dirt that will be surrounding our field. And I'm just doing the quick and easy old method of PVA and different amounts of grit. I'm not going and doing what I have been doing recently, which is using clay to kind of represent earth and then sticking the sand into there. I just want a quick and easy job since I'm going to be covering it mostly up with static grass. You really won't be able to see much of the earth. All right, and now it's time to start prepping the faux fur, which we will use for our field. So since I want a, a wheat field here, you know, you think of pretty amber, deep golden color to wheat, you're going to want a light colored fur for this. So you don't want to use a brown fur or else you'll never really get the color you want. So I have this light fur and I'm just putting on different yellows. I have a yellow ochre, I have a straight kind of mustard yellow, and even like a, almost a pale bone yellow too that I am using to give the base colors of the fur. Uh, so I'm just putting the color down, using my brush to blend it all around so that you have subtle variations, subtle blends in the shades of yellow. And that will basically be our foundations before we start doing our really minute details on the fur. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking a small brush. I'm just going to put in little bits of color around the fur, a little little bits of green, some, uh, some dark flesh tones, some lighter whites. Uh, just to give a, a nice variation as as you look at the grass. So I'm just putting in little daubs of paint, brushing it in so it blends with the surrounding areas. So that when you look at it, it looks like no two blades of grass are the same color. You know, it looks like there's a nice variation in this field. One of my secret techniques for making realistic grass like this is to use lots of flesh tones. Flesh tones actually are one of the better highlighting tools for when working with this faux fur. So I'm putting in here like a dark cadmium skin color and then I'm uh, blending it around. It gives almost like this uh, reddish tint to the grass and then I'm doing like a very pale skin highlight and then blending that in. You really can't go wrong. And here, if you if you have something that kind of sticks out too much, like this red here, I think stands out a little bit too much from the surrounding grass, you can just put some yellow in there or even some fair skin tone and you can kind of subdue the color a little bit. And in fact, we're going to be going over the entirety of this piece of faux fur with a some titanium buff, which is kind of a, a bone white color. And that's really going to tone down a lot of these uh, really high highlights and it will kind of blend it all together. So we'll just put that over 
pretty much the entirety of this and we have our faux fur done. Faux fur is actually a pretty quick and easy method of making some nice looking grass. It's actually a lot quicker than using a static grass applicator. Uh, you can just put down a few tones, blend it together and you have yourself a nice piece. So after I prime the wall a nice black color, I'm now going to zenithal it and go over it from a top down angle with my airbrush, hitting it with some gray. That'll create some nice shadows and transitions so we can just put a few washes over our wall and call it a day. You know, this technique is not only used for miniatures, it's really helpful for when painting terrain. Now we're gonna go over all the dirt sections that I primed with this burnt umber color, just going all around it. If you get a little bit of the brown on the walls, don't worry about it. We're gonna put washes over it. It'll just look like it's a little muddy. That is totally fine. So I'm gonna cover pretty much the entirety of this MDF board with that burnt umber color. And then I'm gonna go over it with a highlight of a mix of that burnt umber and a little bit of titanium buff to get this nice kind of chocolate brown color. And I'm going to just quickly overbrush all the grit that I put down in my previous stages. And then as a final high highlight, I'm just going over it with that titanium buff, just bringing out those really high pieces of the grit jutting out from the dirt. That's all I'll be hitting with the buff. And now that my stone wall is dried, I'm gonna go over it with a variety of washes so that no two rocks are really the same color. So I'm hitting it with a watered down flesh wash. And then I'm gonna go and get this uh, nice brown green ink and hit some of the rocks with that. And then finally, I will hit up uh, a yellow ink on others and I'll leave probably about half the rocks, just the gray color that they are. And then we'll go over the entirety of the wall here with a black wash to kind of tie all the, all the rocks together, give some nice low lights and highlights in there, blend all those different colors in. And then we're gonna let that dry for a while. And then to make it kind of look mossy, make it look like this old wall that's been around for generation after generation, I'm going to take Streaking Grime by Vallejo and I'm gonna water that down and I'm going to cover the entirety of the wall and it'll give us this really kind of faded, subdued, green, mossy look to the wall, which I think will fit in with the whole theme that I'm going for here. And so now it's time to put down the faux fur. I use CA glue, do not glue this down with PVA as it will wick into the grass and will cause a mess. It'll, all the grass will clump up and it will look awful. So do not use PVA glue for this. And then I'm going to go and now I'm gonna start working on my grass that will be surrounding my, my field here. And I'm gonna be using static grass. So I'm putting down a nice uh, thick application of PVA glue. I'm gonna be using six and four millimeter grass, a little bit longer than what you often get from hobby stores. I think it will blend with the long uh, wheat grass a little bit better. So just taking my static grass applicator here, just making several passes, building up the density of the grass. And then once I got that four millimeter grass to a consistency I like it, now I'm going over it with six millimeter just to give uh, some nice variation in the length of the grass so it's not all kind of a, a mono size. And then shaking off the excess. And then we're gonna work to try and make the grass look even more realistic by putting in little weeds. So I'm using some coarse and fine turf here. I'm using the light green to kind of simulate little bushes also to mask the edge of the faux fur there. And then I'm using one of my favorite colors. I'm using my burnt grass color by Woodland Scenics and kind of sprinkling that around in there, giving it a little bit of a yellow tone. I'm also putting down some of the fine earth blend by Woodland Scenics. And then I'm topping it off with a highlight of these yellow meadow flowers. And there we go, we got some pretty realistic looking grass. One of the final steps to finish off this field is I'm gonna add some bushes over to the side of the wall. So here is just a piece of clump foliage, which I'm dipping in like this evergreen color. I want it to kind of look like a juniper bush. So I just put that down there now next to the wall, put a little highlight of a lighter green color on it. Then I'm gonna go get a piece of lichen. I'm gonna spray it with some adhesive and put on some light green coarse turf. Also put that next to the wall. And then I'm actually gonna be using a natural armature from Scenic Express. It's their super tree product. 
and I'm going to be sprinkling, sprinkling a little bit of burnt grass on the edges after spraying it down with some adhesive. It'll have a nice kind of open, airy canopy. Look pretty nice there in between my two bushes. I drilled a little hole for that to sit in and then put a little bit of CA glue around it to hold it in place. And there we go. We give a an interesting little look to the corner of our field there to draw the eye. So here's my finished field and I put a few figures on there to show you how they kind of sink into the grass, which, I, which is what I like about this method of making farmland. Now I think the grass is a little bit too green that I have surrounding the field, so I might try and tone that down, but at least you get an idea of how to go ahead and make a pretty easy and realistic looking field for your wargaming table. Now, if you enjoyed this, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll try and Give you guys some more videos soon. Take care.